a terrific job there. Uh, great team you've got there that yes. look at what is going on in the universities. Uh, so, good news? Excellent news. This is a really, really good step. Uh, you know, my brilliant colleague, Matthew Lesh, has done yeah. a lot of work on this, and he did a, most recently a free speech on campus audit, which, uh, you know, using his methodology, uh, assigned red for very hostile uh, campuses, or amber and green for ones that respect free speech. There's one to campus in the country that respects free speech, and 80% of campuses have red ratings. And I've got a few examples of what universities get up to. At Federation Uni, bullying in their code is hurting somebody's feelings. Uh, at Latrobe, bullying includes unintentional offence or emotional injury, uh -huh. uh, because as Dennis Miller says, we've uh -huh. raised a generation of emotional haemophiliacs. <laughs> and here's the kicker. Several Australian universities ban sarcasm, because it's a form of violence. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I went to Melbourne University. It wasn't a particularly right-wing institution when I was there, but I knew that I could push the boundaries. I could be a right-wing ratbag and say whatever I like. If I tried that on now, I'd probably be expelled. So the Institute of Public Affairs did a free speech audit on Australian universities, and they found that 79% are rated red, which is strong restrictions on free speech, with another 19% earning an amber rating. Probably should go with a different color other than amber. So I decided to go out and do some intense research to find out if this is actually true. Turning over every rock, searching every nook and cranny, public libraries, universities, funeral homes, nothing was out of bounds for my intense crack investigation. We're scouring the region's greatest documented facilities in the search for the history of sarcasm and the great offenses it's committed throughout history. See what we can find. Onto us, we've been using sarcasm flagrantly this whole time. I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. This is where the people who violate the speech code are going. Um, anytime anyone uses sarcasm, I'm pretty sure they're sticking them within these glass confinements. Um, it's an updated version of the gulags, I'm pretty sure. So this is a sarcasm and offensive free speech zone. I think that guy's picking his nose, I'm not completely sure. You step out of line, you're going into the glass house. Tough but fair. What we're finding here, what we're discovering, is that way more people are in libraries than they used to be. But we're also finding hidden gems about Kim Jong-un and Kim Jong-il. I think we've stumbled into something huge here. There's some sort of archive, a library if you will, of banned books. Personally, I'm offended by this entire section right here. What we have here is a person sleeping. And um, we're just gonna... Oh, she's waking up, she's waking up. Is she reading or is she sleeping? I'm not sure. Possibly praying, possibly crying. Nothing's happening, we're not recording. Nothing, nobody, nobody's recording anything. Just a guy with a coat. Just a guy with a coat. So from my intense research, I've concluded that the harassment policies and free speech policies aren't actually as bad as they've been portrayed in the media. However, there is still some insanity that does need some evaluation. Case in point, Western Sydney University has identified some potential aggressive behaviors for you. 
These include sarcasm, an increase in the volume of my voice. You've been cryogenically frozen for 30 years. Who are these people? The shouting is a temporary side effect of the unfreezing process. Yes, I'm having difficulty controlling the volume of my voice. Increase in the volume of your voice, mumbling, prolonged glaring, or even absence of eye contact. Harakiri, harangue, harbinger, harbor, harassment. Yep, doesn't say staring or not staring at people. Stop staring at me, that's harassment. You're not looking at me, that's also harassment. Your friends over at Queensland University, for some reason I can't say Queensland, Queensland University has decided that. Sarcasm as well as ridicule are harassment, so you can't even make fun of people, like what is school even doing anymore? And of course I've saved the best for last for you. Charles Sturt University has included in their definition of harassment as making a person feel offended. Just like I'll be personally offended if you don't like and subscribe right now, go ahead and do it. If you don't like and subscribe right now, I'm going to ban you. Bullying behaviors may include but are not limited to abusive or offensive language, insults, ridicule, sarcasm, or intimidating remarks, deliberately excluding someone from work-related or study-related interactions, social activities, or networks. Meaning, you cannot disclude somebody from a social activity. This is insane. Now, I understand what they're trying to do here. They're trying to cover all their bases, make sure nothing's left out, and make sure that everybody feels included and overall do the right thing. But this is how things get exploited and how we go down silly roads with like speech policies and things that are made into law where offending somebody is against the law. Or like in Spain, where manspreading is against the law. 36 inch inseam. So the minute I walk on the subway, I'm manspreading. It's hard to keep these things contained. There's a reason we have a desk here, because my legs, they're all over the place. I mean, this is... Well, you should be standing anyways, offering your I, seat I do stand. to the women on the subway. I do stand. But always remember that this is a university. These are universities, and they're supposed to be adults that are going here under their own free will. They're paying to go here. And it's considered offensive or harassment if I don't invite somebody to something. Being offended or having something cause offense is completely subjective, meaning it's completely up to the person and each individual person, it varies on who finds what offensive. That's not how laws are supposed to be made. That's not how rules or society is supposed to run. How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie. And today we are going to discover that we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank the Lord that I am not in college or university in this day and age or in high school with all the social media out there. I'd probably be kicked out before day one for making a stupid comment. So let me know what you think about this in the comments. Are they just covering their bases? Are they just doing the right thing? Or are they pushing this just a little too far? But please, no sarcasm. N so do let me know what you think in the comments. Is this appropriate? Are they, are they just trying to cover their bases? Are they just trying to make sure everyone feels included and do the right thing? Or are they pushing this too far? And is it the first step, first step to something much worse? Let me know and remember the rules. No sarcasm, no staring or not staring. And you have to, you have to invite me to all of your parties. If you do not invite me to at least 20 parties in the comments, you're all getting banned. That's it, I'm sorry. Fatherly leader. This is what happens when you ban sarcasm. This is what happens. Oh, it looks on like North Korea. I'm surprised.